Hi, and welcome to the Tristan Channel. Ancient civilizations spanned across vast geographical regions and endured for thousands of years within these diverse societies, attitudes, beliefs, and understanding, understanding sorry, regarding gender varied considerably. Contrary to popular belief, it is evident that ancient civilizations recognized gender as a spectrum rather than a rigid binary. By exploring examples from cultures such as Mesopotamia, Egypt, Greece and Rome, we can shed light on the fluid and multifaceted understanding of gender in antiquity. Mesopotamia. In Mesopotamia society acknowledged sorry acknowledged that gender was not solely determined by biological sex. The earliest surviving legal code, the Code of Hurrumbi, reveals that gen gender roles were fluid and expectations varied across social and economic contexts. I butchered that one. Um, women, women held positions such as priestesses, traders, and artisans, indicating the recognition of their agency and autonomy. Furthermore, the existence of specific terms for individuals who did not fit into traditional male or female categories, such as Isinu, Isinu, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, and Kugaru, further illustrates the acceptance of gender diversity in this ancient civilization. Egypt. Ancient Egypt also recognized a spectrum of gender. The famous pharaoh Hatshepsut provides a notable example born as she not only reigned as a king but depicted themselves in statues and reliefs as a male pharaoh. At least I pronounced that one I think sort of like compared to the last one. This is was because they that's because they were transgender that they intentionally blurred gender boundaries and that Egyptian society was accepting of them. Non-conforming gender roles. Additionally, the pharaoh Akhenaten was intersex. The Egyptians' belief in the mythological concept of androgyny represented by their gods, such as Atum, further empathized empathized the fluidity of gender in their culture. <clears throat> Greece, ancient Greece, known for its rich mythology and influential thinkers, also accepted a spectrum of gender. The myths themselves, often featuring gender-bending gods and goddesses, embodied the idea that gender was not fixed, but existed on a fluid continuum. Another word. The concept of hermaphroditus, which later became intersex, a figure combining both male and female characteristics, illustrates the Greek understanding of sex and gender as a spectrum. Furthermore, sorry, behave yourself. Furthermore, Greek literature and philosophy frequently explore the complexities of gender identity, showing a nuanced acknowledgement of the fluidity of gender roles. I'm sorry, but history just... Oh. <laughs> so quick, no, I actually just say crazy. Rome, in ancient Rome, gender was not exclusively defined by biological sex. The existence of the Galli castrated priests of the goddess Sibyl exemplifies the Roman understanding of gender as a spectrum. Mm. These individuals performed sacred rituals and were revered for their religious roles, highlighting the acceptance of non-binary and transgender identities within Roman society. 
Moreover, Roman society also recognised the existence of intersex individuals by using the term hermaph hermaphroditus to describe people born with both male and female physical characteristics. <clears throat> the evidence from ancient civilizations such as Mesopotamia, Egypt, Greece and Rome demonstrates that the understanding of gender was not limited to a binary system. Also as other cultures as well. These societies acknowledge acknowledge sorry that gender roles and identities could be fluid and diverse. Priests, rulers and mythological figures who transcend traditional gender roles were celebrated and respected. This recognition of a gender spectrum within various ancient civilizations challenges the assumption that rigid gender binaries have always been the norm. Amateurs. Behave. By appreciating the multifaceted nature of gender in antiquity, we can broaden our perspective and understand that the concept of gender has evolved across history. But who forced the binary? Well, it wasn't science. Culturally, it was thanks to Christianity and its belief in the Adam and Eve story. E.g. there's only man and woman and that's the way it is, no matter what, because God made it so. Oh really, as if we can understand the will of a supreme being. I know, the arrogance. And technically, if indeed Eve came from Adam's rib, then either Eve is actually Steve, or that Eve is the first trans woman. Interesting that. Although science and the elder gods would disagree with you, and I don't know about you, but I listen to science. Thanks for watching. Take care and be well.